Tim, could you tell us about yourself and, and what you do? Yeah, mate, um, I'm just a, a, a contract spray rig operator uh, and, and a farmer, yeah. And uh, how did you get uh, started, I suppose? I know you've uh, got some share farming agreements and you've got livestock and you've got cropping and, you, and you've got a fair bit happening. How did, you, how did it get started originally? Uh, look, originally I went to university, uh, Sydney Uni, and did a, a Bachelor of Farm Management and decided that um, I, didn't, I didn't want to be a, a, a farm manager. I wanted to own the place or, or, or work for the money for myself. So uh, I went out and bought a little spray rig and I started off uh, doing little places and, and the demand got bigger and the spray rigs got bigger until I got three or four of them behind me and, and then uh, we bought a little block of land. Actually, the bloke next door came over and saw me and he said, he liked the way I was operating my own parcel of land and he said, can I start taking on his as well in the profit share agreement? So, um, essentially, we sprayed for him, uh, unbeknownst to me that he was going to ask that and I didn't, uh, I didn't send him the bill. Uh, that was probably because I was being a bit slack with my paperwork, but uh, it worked out in the long run because he, when he came and asked me to send him the bill, he said he wasn't going to pay it, he was just going to let me take over his bit of country. And, and work on a 50-50 share basis, so 50% in, 50% out. I did all the work. Good, it's, um, <clears throat> it's funny how uh, good deeds good deeds come back and turn into you know, better things. Uh, what kind of assistance did you utilise when setting up your business? Did you have access to anyone else, I suppose, from an external point of view or anyone that you used as a, a mentor or a, uh, or, or I suppose a, a, a friend in the industry? Yeah, look, I did. Um, I actually used uh, probably my biggest friend at the moment is my accountant and my solicitor. Um, you know, they do cost you a fair bit of money, but they put you down the right track and tell you whether you're straight up, whether you can or you can't. Um, and that was a, that was a really good start. So they they were both very, fairly positive and encouraging. Um, and then I, I spoke to some some people over towards Yeovil and, and had a bit of a chat who were doing the same sort of thing I was looking at uh, with a lot of livestock trading and and. Uh, and they gave me a few pointers and tips of the trade and said, um, <clears throat> you know, if you're going to have a go, you need to do it properly and, and get stuck into it. So that's what we've done. And Tim, where are you going with the business now? Obviously, you've got a good start. You've got uh, established um, sections of your business. What's the future? Where's the future for you? Yeah, look, so um, uh, hopefully none of my clients, my spray clients are listening to this, but um, <laughs> the idea is, is to uh, spend a bit more time spraying. Uh, it's a bit of a cash cow for me. It, it's paying for the farming. Um, but in the next couple of years, I think we'll try and drop off a lot of the spraying and focus more on, on the acquisition of, of, of land. Um, not necessarily. I, I used to think I needed to own every bit of country I was going to run, but I think now um, you know these profit share agreements and, and leasing and share farming, it seems to work. I'm not putting money into... Uh, in the land where I can be putting it into livestock. So, um, in the next couple of years, I want to uh, I want to just increase. You know, we're sort of running about three and a half thousand acres at the moment, <coughs> um, plus spraying full time. So it's, it's a pretty big job for myself. Uh, running running over six and a half thousand sheep. Um, so I need to yeah I need to just sort of back off the spraying and pick up the land and, and, and try and get a, a bloke on to give me help. What have you have been your biggest business challenges in your time, you know, to date? Uh, time is a, is a huge challenge. <laughs> um, the weather at the moment, you know, we go from, from excessive dry, which, which will bust anybody, to um, excessive wet when you can't even get on the land, but you can make money out of mud, so I'm, you know, every day it rains, I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, but obviously capital, um, that, that, that finance to start out is probably the killer. How, how I did it, it's a matter of just being patient um, and taking the time. You know, you, you can't, you know, rain wasn't built in a day, so you can't expect to go and buy a thousand sheep at a hundred dollars. Uh, go out and buy two or three hundred at a hundred dollars and, and breed your way up. Uh, you know, start small and good things come. I think you've touched on a bit, and I suppose the final question uh, was what business advice or tips would you like to share? Um, and I think you've probably just touched on a couple of those. From my perspective, uh, outside of finance, um, I think you need to have a plan. That, that's the major, major piece of information that anybody's got to go into because without a business plan, you, you can't make key decisions. You can't decide whether you want to uh, move.
move forward or stop or, or whether you need to borrow money or, or not borrow money, uh, whether it's a viable decision or not. Um, and, and look, there's been times, you know, that, that I haven't stuck to my business plan and it's bitten me. Um, so the key, I think, before you go to a bank or before you go to a, a potential share farm or any of those, is to have a business plan in place so that when you sit down and talk nitty gritty, you've actually got something to work by and, and stick to your plan. Don't, don't deviate. If it, if it doesn't seem right, then it's probably not right. Very good. Well, thanks, Tim. I'll let you get on with spraying and we'll catch up with you again soon.